Hello and welcome to part 2 of the character customization tutorial for Empire. And let's just jump straight back into it, shall we? In this part, we are going to make it possible to customize the character by using arrow buttons on the screen. And for that, we are going to create a new screen where we are going to place the character composite that's playable as well as all of the arrow buttons. So let's go ahead and do that now. So we can go ahead and create this screen just underneath this character transform. So we're going to say screen character customization. And the first thing we're going to add to this screen is going to be the composite. And to add a composite to a screen is actually a little bit different than adding just a normal image. So if our character, this table, was a normal image, then all you would have to do to add it to the screen is to say add character, like so. But to add a composite displayable to a screen requires you to wrap the name of the displayable into quotation marks, like so. So that is the difference between adding a composite and a normal image to a screen. So with that done, we are also going to make sure that we are resizing this image to half of its original size. So we're going to say at half size, like so. And then we're also going to align this image. And for that, we can just say align 0 0.5 and 0 0.5 to make it centered on the screen. And then we're going to go ahead and add all of the arrow buttons to this screen. And those are going to be image buttons. So we're going to say image button. And we don't have a hover state for these buttons. So we're just going to use the idle image. So we're going to say idle. And the first row of arrow buttons that is going to go to the right and to the left of the character is going to change the hair of the character. So let's go ahead and first of all add the right arrow button. So we're going to say UI arrow right dot PNG. And then we're going to align this. So we're going to say align. And this is going to be at 0 0.7 and 0 0.3. Next, we're going to add an action to this image button that is going to allow us to switch to the next hair in the list. So for that, we're going to say action. And this action is going to be a function call to a function we're going to create soon. So we're going to say function. And we're going to call this function customize character. So we're going to say customize character, like so. And then we're going to add a parameter to this function that we're going to call type. So we're going to say type, like so. And this parameter is going to have a value that is going to tell our function what part of the character we're trying to switch. And in this case, it's going to be the hair. So we're going to say hair, like so. And then we're going to add a second parameter that is going to be called direction. So we're going to say direction. And this one is going to have a value that decides which button that we are pressing. So we're going to add two quotation marks and then say right, because this is the right button. And then we're going to create a transform that we're going to use for all of these arrow buttons that is going to resize them to be half of their original size, as well as allow us to animate the buttons whenever we are hovering over them. So for that, we're going to say add arrows. And then we can go ahead and create that transform underneath the character transform. So we're going to say transform arrows. And then we're going to set the zoom to 0 0.5. So we're going to say zoom 0 0.5. And then because we want to animate the arrows from the center, we're going to set the anchor point to the center. So we're going to say anchor and then 0 0.5 and 0 0.5. And now for the animation, we're going to make sure that the arrows are going to zoom in a little bit when we are hovering over them, and then they're going to zoom out again when we move away from them. So for that, we're going to say on hover, and then we're going to say zoom 0 0.55, and then on idle, zoom 0 0.5, like so. So now when we are hovering over an arrow with the cursor, it's going to zoom in to be just a little bit bigger. And then when we move the cursor away from it, it's going to go back to its normal size. And I'm just going to correct the spelling mistake down here so that it says correctly, like so. 
And now we're going to go ahead and add the left button on the left side of the character. So I'm going to go ahead and duplicate this line and then rename this file path to arrow left, like so. And then we're going to position this at 0 0.3 and 0 0.3, like so. And then we're going to say that we are pressing the left button instead of the right button. So we're going to change this to say left, like so. And now to make this a little bit more readable, since we're going to add many buttons to this screen, we can go ahead and add a comment just above so that we can more easily tell that these two image buttons are going to control the hair. So we're going to say hair, like so. And then we can go ahead and duplicate this whole section with the comment, like so. And then we name this to skin. And then we're going to change the type to skin for the function, like so, and like so. And then we'll do the rest. So we're going to duplicate this again. And this time it's going to be the eyes. So we're going to say eyes. And we're going to change the type for the function to eyes. Like so. And then we'll do the last thing, which is going to be the shirt. So we're going to duplicate this again. And rename this to shirt. And the type to shirt as well. Like so. So now we're finished the content for this screen. So now we can go ahead and actually create this customized character function. And for that, we're going to create an init Python block. And we're going to do that at the very top of the script. So I'm going to create a few of the lines just above here. And then we're going to say init Python, like so. And to create the function, we're going to say def customize character like so and then we're going to add two run brackets and then we're going to fill it with the parameters that we created down here which is type and direction so we're going to say type and direction like so and then inside of this function we're going to change some of the variables that we created earlier on which is namely the skin color hair color shirt color and eye color variables and to change those variables inside of this function, we're going to first of all need to make them into globals. So for that, we're going to say global skin color and then global hair color and global eye color and global shirt color, like so. And then we're going to check which arrow that the user is pressing. So if the user is pressing the right or the left arrow button, so for that, we're going to say if direction is equal to right. So if the player is pressing a right arrow button, which can be any right arrow button in the character customization screen, then we're going to check if the arrow button is controlling the skin color, first of all. So we're going to say if type is equal to skin, like so. And now because the user is pressing the right arrow button to pick the next skin color, then we're going to make sure that we are assigning the next skin color in the skin colors list to the skin color variable that is used to pick the correct image inside of this composite. So for that, we're going to say skin color is equal to, and then we're going to refer to the skin colors list. So we're going to say skin colors like so. And now to pick the next item in the skin colors list based on where we already are, we're going to add two square brackets, like so. And then instead of him, we're going to add the correct index value where the next item is in the list. And to do that, we're going to say skin colors dot index. So here we're using the index function or method that is available to a list object in order to find the index value for an item instead of a list. So instead of these two brackets, we're going to add the value that we want to search for to then get back the index position of that item in the list. So for that, we're going to say skin color because we want to search for the current skin color that exists inside of the skin color variable. And then we're going to say plus one, like so and we're adding the plus one outside of the two round brackets. So with this code right here, 
we are picking the index position of the currently selected skin color and then we're adding one to that index in order to get the next index in the list. Now there's only one problem with this code that we're going to find and that is if we imagine that the player is going to try to pick the next item in the list while already being on the very last item. And in such a case we're going to get an error on the screen that is going to tell us that we don't have any more items in the list to pick from. So to prevent that from happening we're going to create an if statement just above this line that is going to check that we are not on the very last item in the list before we go ahead and switch to the next item. So for that we're going to create a new line above here like so and then we're going to say if skin colors dot index and then skin color so here we're picking the index position of the currently selected skin color and then we're going to check if that index value is less than the size of the skin colors list and for that we're going to say len skin colors and then minus one like so so as long as the currently selected skin color has an index value in the skin colors list that is less than the total size of the skin colors list minus one then we can go ahead and select the next skin color in the skin colors list and the reason why we are subtracting one from the length of the skin colors is because otherwise this if statement is not going to work correctly because an index value instead of a list always starts at zero which means that if we have three items in the skin colors list then the last item in the list is going to have an index value of two instead of three so if we imagine that this index method is going to return the value 2, which is the last item in the list, then we're checking if 2 is less than 3 minus 1, which is also 2. So if 2 is less than 2, which it is not, then we cannot change to the next skin color. But if we are instead on the index value of 0 or 1, then we can go ahead and switch to the next skin color. So now we're just going to make sure that we are indenting this line like so. And now we're going to create an else statement that is going to run if the user happens to be on the very last item in the skin colors list and presses on the right arrow button. Because in such a case we can simply make sure that the skin color is going to return back to the first item. So for that we're going to create a new line underneath here and then go inwards once in the annotations like so. And then we're going to say else and then skin color is equal to skin colors and then we're going to pick the first item in the list so we're going to add zero instead of these two brackets like so so now we have made it possible to switch the skin color by pressing on the right arrow button so now we're going to continue by doing the other parts as well such as the hair so for that we're going to go ahead and copy paste this whole section so I'm going to duplicate this like so and then we're just going to change all the references to skin to say instead hair like so so we're going to do that for all of the references like so and then we can continue with the eyes for example so we're going to duplicate this section again like so and then switch here to say eyes and the same for the other parts Like so and just make sure that you are saying eye colors in all of these parts right here but eyes instead of this right here and then we'll do the last one which is going to be the shirt so we're going to duplicate this once again like so and then we're going to say if type is equal to shirt and then these as well
So now we have made it possible to switch to the next item for each part of the character. And now we're just going to make sure that we are doing the same thing but to the left so that we can reverse through these lists instead. So for that we're going to copy paste this whole section with the if statement that is checking if the direction is equal to right, like so. And then we're just going to change the right to say left instead so that we're checking for the right direction and the left direction. And then we're just going to make sure that we're changing this if statement to say elif instead. So now we have an if statement and an elif statement. And now instead of here, we're going to change these if statements to check if the item that is currently selected is not the first item, because if it's not, then we can go ahead and reveal an item that goes before the current item in the list. So for that, we're going to remove this part right here that says is less than, and then we're going to say instead is more than zero, like so. So as long as the current item in the skin colors list is not the first item, then we can go ahead and reveal an item before it. And to do that, we're simply going to remove this plus sign right here and say minus instead. And for this else statement right here, instead of switching the skin color to be the first item in the list, if we're trying to move beyond the first item, we're going to go back to the last item instead. So for that, we're going to say minus one instead of these two square brackets to grab the last item instead of the skin colors list. And now we're just going to do the same thing for each of the other parts right here. So up here we're going to say is more than zero and then here we're going to say minus instead of plus and then the same here. So more than zero and then minus instead of plus and then these should of course say minus one instead of zero like so. And then we'll do the last one which is this shirt. So we're going to say is more than zero and minus one and then minus one here as well, like so. Now the last thing we're going to do inside of this function is to make sure that the changes that the user is making to their character can be saved and then loaded back up. And the reason why we have to implement an extra step to the saving and loading is because sometimes when you're working with Python code instead of MPy, and especially instead of custom functions, is that some of the changes they are doing to variables, for example, are not going to carry on into a saved file. And the reason for that is usually that MPy has not been able to get to the next interaction after the changes has been made, and therefore was not able to include the changes into the saved file. So to make sure that the changes are going to be saved, we're going to use a function instead of MPy called retain after load. And I will leave a link into the description box below where you can read more about this function. So let's go ahead and use this function now. And to do that, we're going to create a few of the lines underneath this last else statement, like so. And then we're going to go inwards until we reach the same annotation as these outer if statements. So one, two, three times, like so. And then we're going to say rempy dot retain after load, like so. But that is going to be the end of this video and we're going to continue in the next one by actually showing on the screen the character customizer. So thank you so much for watching and if you like this video I would very much appreciate if you left a comment to let me know as well as pressing the thumbs up button. So with that said, I'll see you in the next video.